Hi, everyone, and welcome to PK's webinar, Winning with Experience-Focused Customer Success. Before we get started, I just want to remind everyone that all attendees have been muted, and if you have any questions, just use the Q&A feature in the Zoom app, and when the presentations have concluded, we'll address questions and provide answers um, at that time. And if we run out of time, we'll be sure to provide answers in writing and share them via email with the group. I'm going to hand things over to Brooke Bores now. She's the engagement manager and solution lead in the technology vertical for PK, and she's going to get things started. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. Um, just a little bit more about myself before we dig in. I've worked for tech companies uh, as, as my client or directly for tech companies for my whole career, 15 years. And over that time, I've been really focused on delivering great experiences for customers and for employees of those companies. Um, so customer success is a topic that's really near and dear to my heart, and I'm excited to share some of PK's perspective with you today. So what we're going to cover today is sort of four main chunks. So our first one, I'm going to share just a little bit about PK. If you're not familiar with our company, I'd love to give you an overview of who we are and, and what we do for our clients. Then we're going to really talk about customer success. We know that retention and renewal are really key focus areas for tech companies and frankly for companies in other industries as well. Um, and we have a, a position on why something might be holding us back from achieving more in that arena. Then I'm going to dig into PK's perspective on what components create a great customer success program. And we're actually going to share some examples of companies that are doing well in each of these areas to give you some food for thought on what you might do differently in your own company. And then, as Linda mentioned, we're going to spend some time at the very end just answering your questions. So I'm going to invite a couple of my colleagues to join me in answering those questions. And uh, I'll just note here, you can submit questions at any time. We'd encourage that throughout the presentation. And then we'll catch up with those questions right at the end. So about PK, PK is an experience engineering firm. Um, this might be a concept that's new to you, uh, but we really focus on the experiences that customers have. And we're also a technology services company, so we bring the best of those worlds together, human-centered design with experience engineering. Um, we take the great design, really designing thoughtful experiences for customers, and couple that with our strong leading technology capabilities. And we really see the intersection of these two things as being the space in which we operate. Sharing just a bit of our client set, um, I know this is a, a big long slide, but we've, we've really focused in these six industries from financial services to retail and consumer. And you'll note the second, to, uh, the second column from the right there covers our technology clients. Um, so we've, wor we've worked with a lot of these clients in helping them design really thoughtful experiences. We're experts in moments that matter. So this is a, this is a really great segue into our topic today for customer success. Um, at PK, we make it our mission to understand the moments that matter for your customers. We draw on our experience and our expertise in order to create great experiences for your customers, for your employees. And then we really pride ourselves on taking a truly bespoke approach for each of our clients, creating that differentiation for them in the market. So it's not just about applying the lessons we've learned in an industry. Um, it is about creating the right experience for you and for your customers. And you can see a few of our um, example clients on the right hand side there. So let's talk a little bit more about customer success. Uh, it's a necessity, it's recognized as a necessity for high tech companies today. When we talk to our high tech clients, one of their top concerns on a regular basis is retention. They're looking for the most effective ways to get customers using their solutions and then renewing at the end of the day when their subscription comes up. It's a chapter in a pretty long history. So customer success, depending on who you talk to, was created around the early 2000s. Sort of was an, 
a point in time where subscription as a service was really getting kicked off. And that created a need for a, a new kind of motion and new engagement with customers. And also customer experience was becoming a differentiator for many companies in the market. So customer success really was an intersection of those pain points driven by a new model for buying products, as well as a new focus on differentiating through a great experience. It's a really fast growing profession as well. LinkedIn puts out a, a jobs report every year. And this year, the 2020 Emerging Jobs Report, again, ranked customer success specialists as one of the fastest growing roles today. Uh, in the US, it's growing at a rate of 34% year over year. Lastly, there's a lot of companies who are actually capitalizing on this trend in customer success and they're creating and innovating on software platforms that help su support customer success professionals. You may have heard of products like Gainsight, Tatango, Churn Zero. They're all really operating in this market to help cust drive customer success. So given that it's been around for so long and there's such a focus on it, why does it still represent such a challenge? Why is it a continual point that people are, are focused on um, and struggling with? We have a couple of thoughts on that. One is this question, is customer success an organization within your company or a priority for your company? We're gonna talk about more about what that might mean using a couple of, of examples here. So one is the focus of your company spend. We've noticed that some companies um, may be investing disproportionately based on the actual customer journey. So customers have a lot more touch points and time with a software company after the decision to purchase. You can see on the journey here, we're showing a few touch points that happen pre-sales and then a lot that happens post-sales. Your customer's experience with your brand, your company, your product, a lot of it is after they've already made that decision to purchase. And yet, some companies invest a lot more in customer acquisition, that front half, um, making sure they're bringing more customers into the sales process. And we would, we would wager that the investment might be better spent in optimizing the touch points that occur after the sale. I want to do a poll now to see for our attendees if, um, if they find that this is the case for their company. So let's bring up a poll um, just so we can see. How is your company investing across the life cycle? Are they investing more in acquisition, more in retention, or maybe an equal mix of both? I'd say that um, one of the things that, that I recognized about more complex um, implementations is that there's a whole host of, of steps that can occur with the customer experience before your users even get onto the platform. So it's really important to make sure that we're really optimizing there. You can vote by simply clicking on the, on the button um, for each of those options. Okay, I'll give, thanks for that. Um, the next thing I want to chat a little bit about, okay, we see our results here. So it looks like um, there's sort of an even split between the acquisition of new customers or, or a mix of both, as well as um, a lot of people are saying that the, the retention uh, of existing customers is a focus of your company spend. So that's, that's great to see. Just a quick stat for everyone. Uh, retained customers often are driving more revenue and more growth for companies than those newly acquired customers. So it makes sense to optimize your spend for the latter half of that customer life cycle. Want to talk about what customer success as a priority versus just customer su success as an organization could really look like. And you'll see throughout the presentation, I really like using examples. So our example company, you may recognize the logo, is Salesforce. So what does a customer success as a priority look like? Well, 
Salesforce actually has customer success as an imperative directly from the CEO, Mark Benioff. He's embedded it into their public messaging, into their internal messaging, and they're held up as an example in the industry of strength and customer success because they've really embedded it into their DNA. You can see on the right hand side of the slide here, I've taken a screenshot of their About Us page on their website today and customer success, which is circled there, is listed as one of their core values. So it's, um, it's really them talking the talk and walking the walk. Just a description of their customer success team from their career site. It says, we accelerate Salesforce by improving customer adoption, engagement, and growth, ultimately partnering in our customers' digital transformations. In collaboration with other teams, we bring the full power of Salesforce to help customers achieve business value faster and work more effectively than ever before. I think something that's really interesting about this is nowhere is renewals mentioned in that sentence about what customer success is there to do. So next we're gonna talk about the building blocks of customer success, and then we'll get into our examples. The first building blocks is the customer engagement model. Customer engagement is about the system of interactions and touch points a, custom, a company has with their customers, both at an individual level, so you can think about the users of your product, and in an organizational level, so you can think about the customer's company and how they are thinking about your product or service. Second building block is organizational accountability. This, this is really about the alignment of the customer success objectives and priorities across all the roles and responsibilities of the company. The third building block is measurement approach. So this refers to the key metrics that are aligned both to the internal part of your model, meaning your company metrics, as well as the external part of your model, which is the customer outcomes. And the last, but certainly not least, as the name might imply, is our foundational capabilities building block. This is about the core data, the technology, and the process capabilities that will enable a truly comprehensive customer success strategy. So our next piece is really about transitioning into each of these building blocks, digging in a little bit deeper, understanding what highly successful um, building blocks would look like using example companies. First is our customer engagement model. So I mentioned a little bit earlier that PK really focuses on moments that matter, and that's all about customer engagement. So designing a thoughtful model is about understanding what those moments that matter are, and then designing a journey to meet those needs and expectations for your customer. A fumbling point we see in some companies is that they will design a customer engagement model the way they want it to go for them that serves their business, instead of thinking of, of it from a customer-centric point of view. What is it that your customer wants and needs from you and your brand, and how can you help them achieve their goals? My spotlight company here is Highspot. You might not be familiar with Highspot, um, so I, I'll just share a quick blurb on what they are. They build a sales enablement platform, and it helps sellers in different industries really effectively prepare for and then engage customers in sales conversations. So their bread and butter is all about sales enablement. So talking a little bit more about that headline that we talked about here moments that matter, and meeting the customer needs. So a key moment in the high spot customer buying cycle is, or life cycle, is right after purchase. You can imagine somebody who's just invested in a so software platform to help their sellers be more effective. They wanna get that up and running quickly, they wanna get their sellers onboarded, and they wanna get value out of that investment. So it's a key moment that matters. And designing a thoughtful experience is something that Highspot did really well. 
they've taken and embedded some steps directly following purchase to make sure that their customers can implement the platform very quickly, um, even in its basic level. So they have a series of steps that help the buyer quickly diagnose their existing sales enablement content and develop an organizational strategy so that they get, can get high spot up and started. Even as there, there's a need to evolve and iterate over time, they can get sellers onto the platform and utilizing it very quickly. They're thoughtful in their engagement strategy in other ways. So I would say that this might be a theme for the other companies you hear about today, but Highspot has really invested in the business problem that they're out to solve, which is sales enablement. They really care about great sales enablement. They run an annual customer roadshow called Highspot Spark. They have sales, sales enablement, and marketing leaders from their customer companies come together and share their lessons with each other. So this is an opportunity for those professionals to learn from their peers. So they're going beyond their product and services. It's not a conference about all the features of Highspot and how to use it. It's truly a forum for other customers from, to learn from each other. It's really above and beyond. Kind of makes me rethink the definition we put out here. Maybe it's beyond just meeting the needs and ex expectations of customers. Maybe it's also about exceeding that needs and expectations of customers. It's noteworthy that Highspot also uses their Spark Forum to solicit new ideas for their product, for their roadmap, and they actually engage the product management team in that forum so that the product developers hear directly from customers about desired features and how to make it better. It's a good segue into our next building block, organizational accountability. So I mentioned earlier that some people think about customer success as really relating to the function of a customer success manager, or even the organization called customer success. But at PK, we believe that customer success focused cultures drive accountability across the company for customer results. It's not just the job of a CSM to drive customer success. It's interesting to me that some people peg those two things together, uh, customer success and the role of a customer success manager instead of thinking of it as a mission for the company. Because I think it's pretty aligned to the, to the concept of customer experience being the responsibility of everyone across the company. We think similarly, customer success is the responsibility of everyone at the company. Our highlight here, or spotlight company is Tableau. If you're not familiar with Tableau, they run a business intelligence platform, platform that does data visualization and analytics. And they've really taken a customer centric approach to their, to their product over time. And I'll share a few things that they do that is really um, stellar examples of how they're using their organizational accountability to drive great customer success. The first one is that they actually embed product manager roles within their customer success organization directly. And this gives them the benefit of actually understanding customer feedback that comes through that implementation and onboarding and adoption process back into the product itself. So existing customers can help inform future customers' success through those features. They have also a number of programs that actually bring customers directly into talk with development teams. Again, just a really customer-centric approach to understanding what's gonna make customers be truly successful using their product and services. The last piece that I would mention is that Tableau actually has a function within their marketing team called Engagement Marketing. And they are focused on how they can help Tableau users grow their skills professionally, so on an individual level, and then also how they can help companies that have invested in the Tableau software implement a data-driven culture within their company. It's interesting that we're talking about data-driven culture because it's an excellent transition into our next building block that's all about data, our measurement approach. 
So we've talked about how a lot of companies think of customer success as a renewal driving mechanism. But our position is that companies that do customer success exceedingly well think about more than just renewal and retention. They think about the customer health. They look at the customer lifetime value. And uh, most importantly, maybe they are looking at the ROI that you're actually driving for the customer. So the customer purchased your product to achieve some outcome. Are they achieving that outcome? We wager that renewal doesn't necessarily indicate that they achieved that outcome. And companies that are thinking about this for their customers are really doing great, great work together. My example company here is Microsoft. Um, and I have a couple of different aspects of their business that are interesting regarding the measurement approach. The first is on their Microsoft 365 product. They have something called the secure score. This, this data-based score tells customers how they are sitting with respect to security and how they might improve their security position over time. So they give them specific actions on how to improve their security score. And they do this utilizing benchmarks from similar organizations. So Microsoft has taken all of the data that they understand about customers, what makes a truly secure implementation, and they provide that data back to their customers. Uh, the second example that I want to use is about their cloud services part of their business. So Azure has a, a dashboard that helps them drive customer success on their cloud services. You can imagine it's a fairly complicated endeavor and they think about many different aspects of the customer experience in driving that true customer success. As you might already wager, part of that dashboard includes just usage and adoption metrics, but maybe more surprisingly, their understanding of customers who are very successful in using Azure services lead to other indicators like governance model and even resilient architectures. So they measure this for customers as well and then create a set of recommended actions in order to improve the position for each of those customers. One thing that's notable about, about both of these examples is that they continue to iterate over time. And this is a really important part about measurement approach. It's important to evolve as new information, new data becomes available, add in new metrics, build in additional modeling, and really serve up the data to your customers when you can. An interesting note on the dashboard example that I gave, they've actually built in some automation to it. So whereas historically, someone in a customer facing role in the field would have to go drive action to improve a score on an individual pillar, they've actually automated some of those steps that, that don't need a person to intervene. And this allows people to actually focus on the highest value activities for those customers. Which brings us to our last building block, foundational capabilities. Foundational capabilities is just like it sounds, foundational to your customer success strategy. Having the right data, the right tooling, the right processes in place is really critical for ensuring you have a great customer experience. I know it's easier said than done. I worked in IT myself for a number of years, um, but being thoughtful about this component is really critical. It's not just about the people, it's about how you support those people, your partners, your employees, and your customers with what they need in order to be successful. Our company spotlight here is a company called HubSpot. They focus in the small and medium business space on helping, helping their customers drive demand through inbound marketing mechanisms. So they have a number of products that support their ecosystem. And they're an interesting company here because they've really built their business around radical transparency. 
they give their customers information about what they learn internally. HubSpot is one of those companies that eats their own dog food, they use their product, they practice what they preach, and then they share those learnings back with their customers and with their prospects. They serve those insights up directly to partners as well. So the example here is that they have a partner network of marketing agencies that use the HubSpot platform in order to drive campaigns on behalf of customers. And these partners actually have access to a client management dash dashboard that helps them understand how their campaigns are performing relative to other campaigns. And not just that they manage themselves, but that other partners are managing. So that data is anonymized, but it helps each marketing agency have an understanding of what they might do differently. And as you can see, it's a capability that exists that doesn't require a human, doesn't require a CSM to go deliver that report on a monthly basis to that partner. It's automatically built into the experience of that marketing agency. It increases the stickiness, the effectiveness, um, and the success ultimately of that partner and their customers. Now that we've talked through each of these building blocks, I think it's time for some myth busting. Let's start with customer success is dependent on an organization of customer success managers. So you'll see this with some of the myths, they're partially true. So this one might be one that's partially true. We think it makes sense that having customer success managers there to manage your really complicated large customer implementations, large customer um, value generation, it might make sense. But there are other people that support customer success across your company and even partners that support it. And then something that might surprise you uh, from our position is that we also believe customers support their own success. Having really good self-serve mechanisms for your customers ensures that your services are well adopted and utilized by your customers. The second myth that we busted today is that customer success is only a post-sales accountability. We know that your reputation on service, support, um, and even how, how the technology grows over time is a key part of a buying decision. So, Customer success is really a focus of pre-sales as well. Um, and having it embedded throughout your roles in your company, as well as embedded within the customer lifecycle, is a key part of a really strong customer success engine. The last myth that we'll talk about today is that customer success is just to drive usage and renewals. I think we used <clears throat> some examples today to illustrate that customer success can be about more than just usage and renewals. It's just a part of that story. So again, partially true. You wanna help your customer achieve something using your solution and the outcome of that might look like usage and renewals, but that's really a trailing indicator to what customer success is all about. Given the time and the space that we're occupying today, we wanted to share just a couple of tips about how you might think about customer success in this changed environment of COVID-19. The first is updating your messaging. So a lot of companies have some sort of automatic marketing messaging out there on their website. They might have campaigns running. It's really important that you make sure that those things are sensitive to the realities that your customer may be facing both on a personal level and on a professional level. So I don't know if you guys had this experience, but I got a few marketing messages that were not quite in the right tone and it really impacted my experience with that brand. Um, so being thoughtful about this is really, is really critical. The second tip that we have is just looking for new use cases for your service that might be important to your existing customer base. So think about how your products and services might offer a new and different value for your customers in this changed and changing business environment. 
Okay, let's get back to our building blocks. I want to do a poll here just so we can kind of understand how people think um, about these about these four building blocks, these four pillars, which represents the greatest need for your company. Where do you think additional investment is needed or more focus? And we're making you pick so you can't choose all four, although maybe maybe you'd like to spread your points across. I like putting myself in my customer's shoes and in evaluating this. Um, how do they experience my customer success efforts and what might I do differently to get there? Okay. Very interesting. So 33% said their customer engagement model. So those touch points and interactions with the customers might need to change. 11% said organizational accountability. Um, and then um, over half the participants focused on measurement approach. That's very interesting. So a lot of you are finding that a focus on the metrics and what you're measuring might be an important next step to take. So we wanted to make this applicable so you could have something to take away. So we're providing a few questions for you to ask yourself um, that might help you think about how to approach this differently. So on customer engagement model, you might ask yourself, which five moments matter most in your customer experience? So what's really driving customer success? Where is your customer um, most impacted by those interactions they have and how can you make those better? On organizational accountability, what's your organization's strongest business case for further and deeper investment in customer success? How can you emphasize the right approach to customer success by driving additional accountability for, for that outcome. On measurement approach, and this is for over half of you, I suppose, what do you not measure today that would help you build a stronger customer success motion? Maybe you heard some metrics um, from our earlier examples that could be interesting for your company. Lastly, how do you help your customers without CSM? So we know many customers are, don't actually have the privilege of having a customer success manager or somebody dedicated to getting them up and running and successful with your products. How can you help them thrive in your technology? What can you do in a self-serve kind of capacity? What can you do with your partner networks in order to drive greater adoption of your products and better outcomes for your customers? Okay, I know um, you all may be looking forward to the Q&A section. I hope you've been submitting questions throughout. We can go ahead and move into Q&A. At this point, I'm gonna invite two of my colleagues to join me and I'll flash their bios up on the screen for you. Um, the first is Jen Winter. Jen is our technology vertical lead. So she's um, been focused on customers from the very beginning. She has been focused a lot on the design and construction of sales and marketing channel programs. And you can see that this is a really great segue into customer success as it's come more to the forefront. She also has a really deep amount of experience with um, partners and partner programs. The second person I'm inviting to the panel is Liam. Um, Liam O'Connor leads our strategy practice and he's worked across industries um, and has focused a lot in high tech in the, in the most recent years. Um, you can see there his long list of specialties. Um, and he is going to be joining us and helping us answer questions related to your technology stack or um, digital marketing and sales enablement. Um, and the last is a picture of me. So if you've been wondering what I look like, now you can see. Okay, let's get into questions. 
Okay. Our first question here is uh, for Jen. So Jen, can you help us with this question? How should companies think about partners in driving customer success? Well, thanks, Brooke. Um, and I worked really hard to look like my picture today, so it's a bummer we're not. We're not. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think more and more, uh, a lot of the organizations we're working with are looking at a missed opportunity, recognizing that partners are a really critical part of a customer success journey. I have three things for people to think about. The first is, like any first impression, many times, uh, a technology's first impression is really created by the partner that's helping an organization deploy it. So it's important for technology companies to really pay attention to partner enablement and actually not just from understanding how many trainings and certifications they've had, but how they're doing on deployments. So we worked with a lot of organizations that are very specifically focused on this as a pain point because they're getting people to go through their training programs and competencies and yet there's still uh, deployment deficiencies or kind of experience deficiencies that are related to the deployment. And any of us that have been in technology probably share the sentiment that in my opinion, you know, 80% of the time, a, an implementation that goes poorly doesn't have a lot to do with the technology, but it has more to do with how the implementation was planned and put in. So it's really important to make sure you're, if you care about success on the other side, that there's a very specific focus on partnering. Mm -hmm. Second piece to that is, you know, so if you've got a partner that's great at doing the deployment and enablement, lots of times partners attach additional services or might be sticking around for a while. Um, helping those partners understand customers that are in trouble because they might not have the same intelligence that the technology organization has and sharing kind of uh, partners that are entering maybe, maybe a space where there is a, a risk of churn and enabling the partner to understand that proactively and drive some additional engagement or connectedness uh, with the customer where they've helped with deployment can be really important. And this is especially, you know, Burke, you talked about most organizations are investing in CSMs that really focus on, you know, their top tier enterprise customers. Usually there's a lot of other customers that just can't get that same attention. So enabling the partner channel to be the primary intervention for that mid-market and small part of this market is really important uh, and the job of the technology organization to make sure that those partners are equipped. I think related to that, the last thing I'd say is helping partners scale their own success touch points is also an opportunity. So technology allows us to create uh, the ability to allow partners to seamlessly go have interactions at really critical customer moments in a world-class way. So for instance, if you want to make sure deployment planning happens really rigorously, it's easy to share with partners a deployment planning touch point that can be interactive with a customer um, and make sure that partner is moving the customer through deployment planning and readiness just the same way you would uh, for an enterprise customer. But sharing that methodology and the ways in which to do that directly with partners so they can leverage that is an easy way to get scale from important touch points in customer success. So a few things to think about there. That's great. Um, I will tell you as somebody who uh, spent literal years implementing um, a cloud services CRM solution uh, internally within a company, it, it makes a ton of sense to make sure that you're equipping your partners with the right information to drive really successful implementations. Um, okay, this next question, um, okay. On accountability, my organization is struggling with aligning the goals of the sales team with the customer success team. Have you seen this addressed at other companies? Yeah, this is, this is a really interesting point. Um, and we've seen this before where essentially the seller will come in and promise the moon, the stars, and in the galaxy and it, and it turns out the product is something very different than that. Um, it's it's a, an earthly product, um, you could say. Um, so I would say uh, making sure that, that your sales team and customer success team are, are really aligned is very important. So um, one example company that comes to mind here is, um, is actually the company called ServiceNow. 
So ServiceNow is, um, as the name implies, a, a platform that actually helps uh, customers provide service internal to their company. Um, and they actually have, have created a role within their organization that's called sales engineer. And it's interesting because the sales engineer is actually not just a seller. They're actually responsible for both. So they're, um, they've kind of combined that concept of customer success with sales to say, the sales engineer is responsible both for making sure the customer gets the right product and then making sure that customer is successful using that product. Okay. Um, so the next question is um, in the COVID-19 environment. So let's, um, let's see. Liam, I think this is a good question for you. In the COVID-19 environment with budgets being tight, what case would you make for investing in customer success versus something else, some other area? Yeah, thanks, Brooke, and good morning and good afternoon, everybody. So I think that the case for investing in customer success is likely stronger now than ever, just for a couple of reasons. One is the, the, the quickest path to uh, growth or even just sort of maintaining your performance right now is with your existing customers. We have strong relationships. So investing in customer success putting solutions and new use cases in front of existing customers, I think is, is a really smart play right now. And I think a lot of companies are, look, are struggling, frankly, to get a lot in terms of uh, demand generation and advertising. Uh, there's just, uh, there's so much noise out there. Everything's virtual. It's very difficult to cut through, but by really focusing on your existing customers. So A, again, which, which use cases are different for them now? and really working collaboratively with them. So instead of just how can you upsell and cross-sell the next product, it's really thinking around how are they using your, your products and solutions now? How is that changing given what's going on in this environment? And how can you help them enable that with existing capabilities? So I think that's one. And then secondly is thinking of, you know, how can you uh, strengthen those relationships with customers to the point where they are uh, being willing to, to act as referrals because that's going to be the the, the quickest path to top line growth. So I think those are a couple of areas where, um, you know, if I had a dollar to spend right now across my portfolio, I'd, I'd definitely be prioritizing customer success. One hey. To just add to that, Howard, is I think, you know, there's another, we are running another uh, webinar tomorrow that does talk about kind of exploring in COVID times from a leadership level, um, you know, what the, opportunities are uh, around certain scenarios that can that organizations can use to address needs that are particularly important in a COVID in COVID environment. So people that are interested in kind of diving deep on that um, can join that too if they want more food for thought on kind of managing through COVID times. Mm. Yeah, great call out. Um, I think we have time for just one last question. Uh, let's do, let's do this one. So, uh, let's have Liam answer this one again. Second question to Liam. Liam, what do you think are the key elements of a customer success, um, technology, uh, says, um, stack here. Um, so what do you think composes a great customer success, uh, technology system? Yeah, I think I, maybe I turn that question around a little bit to say at, at the end of the day that the technology is amazing right now in terms of what you can do with core platforms like your you know, CRM, depending which one you have, they've got a lot of extension capabilities, your content management system, you know, marketing automation platform, et cetera. So there, there's a lot you can do with your existing platforms. And then there's obviously a number of really powerful point solutions. I think we mentioned Gainsight earlier as, as being one of those that sort of combines voice of the customer with product telemetry. So you can both understand how customers are using your products and services, but then also get direct feedback, you know, not just through surveys, but through actual live in product experiences while they're using um, your solutions. So I think, I think those are all important, but 
um, I would say that, you know, as you're thinking this through, the number one thing that we've worked with clients on is you've got to do exactly what you talked through earlier, Brooke, sort of map mm -hmm. out the journey, figure out the capabilities that you need to light up that journey, figure out the exact metrics that you want to measure, and then really make investments in technology that either light up those capabilities and experiences or help you measure and learn something new about your customers. So, I mean, that's, that's where I think we're seeing people prioritize. Yeah. Thanks, Liam. Um, so I'm going to wrap the questions. I did. I thank you so much to Liam and Jen for, for helping me out and, and sharing some of their perspective on customer success as well. I did want to share with you, in addition to the webinar tomorrow, which I will be attending, um, it's going to be a really interesting topic. We're actually running a series on customer success. Um, so these are some of our upcoming sessions. Um, you'll be invited to share if you have a topic that you're interested in hearing more about. Um, you'll be invited to share that after, after this session is over. And last and certainly not least, I like to give credit where credit is due and I just have my photo credits from the presentation today. Thank you all for joining. Um, it, was, um, it was wonderful to be able to speak to you about um, PK's thoughts on customer success. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday.